And now to the Chicago sports bombshell. The Bears sign a purchase agreement for the old Arlington Park race course. Let it be the next Soldier Field. After a lot of rumors, the Bears have announced they are putting a bid in on the Arlington racetrack. Who knows how much longer Soldier Field will look like this on Sundays. The Chicago Bears moving closer to moving to the suburbs. All we're doing is exploring the property's potential. We're exploring the viability of building a football stadium on that property. I don't think Soldier Field today is what the NFL expects in the era of today's game. It's grown so much in 25 years. I don't think Soldier Field is up to the standards the NFL sets. Other teams, frankly, look at the Bears, and they probably do look at us as behind, behind the times. I think it's three NFC Championship games here, um, two wins, and two Super Bowl appearances in 50 plus years. So the history here at Soldier Field isn't amazing. Gain of only three is Tom Thayer. When you look at who makes up the fans that go to Soldier Field, the biggest chunk of it comes from the suburbs. My understanding is that most of their fan base uh, that can pay for tickets is up in the northwest suburbs. The um, majority of the fans that come to the games don't live in the city proper, they live around the city. So um, moving up there is not you know, a huge issue for them. They're not generating the kind of team that is also making it feasible for the city to keep dumping money in there if they're not going to invest in, in the type of players and management that, that could be a winning team. So the Bears for a long time have been wanting a bigger stadium. The city of Chicago tried to satisfy them in the 2000s by putting the what we call the spaceship on top of the Soldier Field. So they, they built this new, modern, glass, steel spaceship and put it on top of the stadium. But it didn't really make anybody happy because it, it's still, I think, the smallest stadium in the NFL. The renovations that were done around the turn of the century may be the ugliest stadium in the NFL, along a light front with a lot of very nice pieces of architecture and stands out like a sore thumb, I suppose. The state did pony up a fair amount of money for the uh, Soldier Field renovations, and they're not done paying that off yet. The state property taxpayers are on the hook for the construction um, loans that were put in place back in 2001. That was about $400 million to you know, kind of put that spaceship looking thing on top of Soldier Field. It did bring it up to a newer era, but it's still kind of behind. The turf is terrible. Players always complain about the turf, not just Chicago Bears players. The Bears are already out of date again. Don't be too quick to pass judgment on the new Soldier Field based on what can be seen from outside. Inside, I found it to be a whole different world, and apparently I'm not alone. So imagine the Bears get one thing that they would like, which is a dome. They still don't own the stadium. It doesn't solve the public transit problem. It's, it doesn't solve that it's an old stadium without all the modern amenities of a, 
of a lot of ballparks now across the country where there's there's restaurants and there's hotels until someone brings an idea that that makes some sense for solving some of their traffic issues for making the stadium better accessible for for giving the bears more of the money that they want i'm not sure what the city can do A lot of people could talk about the history of the Bears in this one location, but it's more of the history of the city itself uh, is really founded in, in this space. Uh, and that's what makes it a really cool atmosphere to enjoy a football game at instead of a very generic place that might just be a parking lot where you go to have some beers and then watch a football game. I think that the game day experience isn't that great right now, but there is room for improvement here in the city that the suburbs just won't be able to provide. Uh, I think that you can make serious investments in this space uh, that you would be making in Arlington anyway. There's so much beauty in this area. I think the Bears have a very unique opportunity that a lot of teams don't have to have this like beautiful stadium downtown in like the best part of Chicago. So I think the Bears could make fewer dollars go further here in Chicago uh, as opposed to moving out to Arlington Park. You know, I'm certainly sensitive to people that want to see the Bears stay in the city of Chicago, but I'm also sensitive to the Bears' concerns that they want to own their own stadium and the property around their stadium so that they can do what they will or want to with the, both the stadium and the surrounding properties. And so this is really an ideal location for them to accomplish that goal. It certainly increases the value of their franchise by a great deal. There's a lot of benefits for them to leave Soldier Field, mainly they'd be the owners. You see all these other teams building their own stadiums and making a fortune. And meanwhile, the Bears have the smallest stadium that they don't even own and they don't get to control. What the owners want is a stadium, but then they want the space around it to include their own hotels, probably residential, and then definitely businesses. We're, we're excited it can be a, a an entertainment destination with multiple facets to it that uh, I think could really help put Arlington Heights uh, on the map as a destination spot. They've been looking at this site for about 50 years now. Bears fans from all portions of the city and I think prioritizing those in the northern and northwest suburbs uh, really sends a message to some of your fans in the city or uh, on the southern or southwest portions of the city that they're not prioritized they don't the Bears don't want either your money or your fandom or you to experience the game day experience like the fans on the north will be able to if they move. So Mayor Lightfoot has said that she's going to find some way to give the Bears a financial package or incentive where it doesn't make sense for them to leave. That's really hard to imagine. What Mayor Lightfoot faces with the Chicago Bears is, is a no-win situation. To make it work for the Bears in the optimal way, you'd give them a new stadium. The problem with that is where are you going to put it? And can you really afford to spend it? You know, Chicago and Illinois have all sorts of financial problems. I, for one, would be hard-pressed to um, divert money to something like a stadium when we have so many other needs that we're dealing with. It's bad mojo for the city to lose its sports team, but it's not really clear what the city can do to stop them, and they have nothing but bad options. 
Chicago Mayor Lightfoot, who has not been in the news for anything at all, okay. is considering putting a dome on Soldier Field to oh, keep the Bears around no. town. If we put a dome on it, you know, you're, you're talking about probably 50 to 100 million dollars. I don't think that structure um, is easily modified for a dome. There's no feasible way to put a roof on Soldier Field. It can't be done. And so if you want to enclose it, uh, you're going to have to build it an entirely different building. People love the city, people love uh, uh, the Bears, and people love sports in general. Uh, and why not give people a chance to weigh in on that conversation? Cardenas believes using crowdsourcing and other means, the city could buy the Bears and keep them from moving out of Soldier Field to the Arlington Racetrack property it just bought. But the idea introduced in City Council today is already playing from behind. People who say, hey, just go buy the team, you actually have to have uh, an offer on the table of sale from the actual team owners. And right now, there's no offer out there to buy the team. And it's not just Soldier Field, but uh, football stadiums in general are economic losers. And they would fail a, an economist benefit cost test. Uh, the, the Bears or any NFL team, probably 80% of their revenues are television. Given the advent of not only television, but high quality television in the 21st century, um, yeah, football may have just kind of outgrown itself in terms of a physical space. So a football stadium for all practical purposes is probably open 100 hours a year, maybe 150 hours a year. It just doesn't seem to me to be a very good use of a very expensive piece of property. It seems to me like the Bears have committed to Arlington Heights already. Hopefully the city will look at all these different feasible options, you know, and try to figure out what might work for the Bears. A move changes nothing, especially in the NFL. If you look at Dallas Cowboys, they do not play in Dallas, they play in Arlington. If you look at the Los Angeles Rams and Chargers, they don't play in Los Angeles, they play in Inglewood. The San Francisco 49ers play in Santa Clara. If not being in Chicago matters that much, then most of those people weren't fans of the team to begin with. They're fans of the identity of the team. It's a great location, great venue, but it, it's really not a real practical location for football games. And so this is really a, a dream location, not just for us, but I think for the Bears as well. It's a very exciting development that um, hopefully we'll see come to fruition down the road. There are just two things you do not want to put on a valuable piece of property. One is a cemetery, and the other is a football stadium. After that, everything's negotiable. I love the Bears like all Chicagoans do. You know, I don't want Chicago to lose population. I don't want Chicago to lose stadiums. I don't want Portillo's to close down anywhere. I mean, you want, you want Chicago to, to succeed. I want the Bears to have a good quarterback, and I want the Bears to have a good defense. I want the Bears to be in Chicago, but sometimes you can't get everything you want in life. Oh, my uh, favorite Bears memory, I suppose, watching Gale Sayers or Walter Payton, um, or sort of in person being able to, to see them live, and certainly the, the hey heyday in the, in the Super Bowl years were just, just fun to be in the city. Oh, I think my favorite Bears memory is watching the fridge like plow through the lines for touchdowns. Of course, I was a huge fan of Super Bowl year. Like everybody around us, we had a big Super Bowl party that year. <laughs> my dad took me to my first Bears game in Wrigley Field on a cold December afternoon. I was probably eight or nine years old and uh, got to see Gail Sayers play and Dick Butkus and all the famous Bears Hall of Famers. For my favorite Bears moment, it's really hard to beat Devin Hester returning the opening kickoff for a touchdown in the Super Bowl. One of my best memories as a fan, them winning the NFC Championship game in 2006, 2007, they beat the Saints and they lost the Super Bowl. But winning that game, it just felt like, okay, here we are. We're one step from really showing everybody how good we are as a team. So my favorite Bears memory, it was in 2003. 
uh, I went to uh, a Bears Vikings game with my dad uh, here at Soldier. They were playing the Vikings. There's about a minute left on the clock. Bears were up, I think, 13 to 10. They were backed up against their own end zone. Uh, Vikings had the ball at the 10 yard line. Dante Culpepper threw a fade route to Randy Moss and uh, Charles Peanut Tillman intercepted it in the end zone to clinch the game, uh, ripped it right out of Randy Moss's hands.